Hello everyone, so let's talk about the SVI, Stable Video Infinity, framework today. It just got an update. Since last month we've tried their version 2, and honestly it still felt a little bit clutchy back then. But if you're experimenting with different video generation scenarios using SVI, good news, they've just rolled out SVI 2.0 Pro. You can find the Pro version on their Hugging Face page, just click on their Hugging Face repo, Go to the Files tab under version 2.0, and you'll see there's a version 2.0 Pro. This Pro version works with the WAN 2.2 models, and it's improved the motion handling quite a bit. Specifically, it's fixed some of those annoying repetitive motions, like the ping-pong effect you'd sometimes see in longer video sequences, where the character just loops back and forth unnaturally. So go ahead and download both the high noise and low noise models, or alternatively, you can head over to the WAN Video Comfy UI Hugging Face Repo by KJ. There's a recent update for the LoRa models. You can click into that LoRa section and find the Stable Video Infinity folder. Once you're in there, you'll see a 2.0 versions folder. And inside that, yep, the version 2.0 Pro models are already added. All right, so let's say I'm going to use this one and try it out with the updated SVI Long Sequence Video Workflow. In the SVI GitHub repo, you'll notice there's a new post announcing the launch of SVI 2.0 Pro. And even better, they've included a native workflow you can use right away. That's the one I'm showing you here. Once you load this workflow, you'll see it requires a new custom node, specifically from the Comfy UI KJ node, which we've used for get and set nodes in workflow. So we're going to update that custom node, and while you're at it, make sure your model loader and LoRa loader are all pointing to the correct files, LightX2V and SVI 2.0 Pro. If you're updating your existing custom nodes, great, but if you're downloading them fresh, that works too. In my examples here, I'm using a completely fresh download of the Confue KJ node, whether you're new or an existing user, to follow the same steps. Just do a git clone and paste in the GitHub repo URL. Once you've got that repo downloaded locally, open your terminal, type cd, and navigate into that folder inside your custom nodes directory. Then run a pip install to handle all the dependency libraries. After that, everything should load pretty smoothly. Once you're finished, just go back to your Python environment and start up Comfy UI. Alright, so in my case, I've successfully loaded up Comfy UI. And once again, you can check out the official SVI post. Link will be in the description below. This time around, it's pretty convenient because they're using native nodes to create the workflow, along with some custom nodes to help pass data between inputs and outputs. Once you've installed the updated version, you should see that the image to video SVI Pro node is working properly. No more red error marks on the node box. You'll have your positive and negative conditions, plus anchor samples and previous samples feeding in from the input. Those anchor samples? they come straight from your initial image frames. So here's how it starts. You load your image using the load image node, resize it, and then use the VAE encoder to convert that image into latent data. This workflow minimizes the number of steps needed. Instead of running VAE encode and decode on every single sampler, we're directly passing latent data in and out across each sampling group. The extended images, those are only used at the end to stitch everything together for the final video preview. This is a much more direct way to process latent data without all those extra encode-decode steps. It's pretty helpful for speeding up your runtime too. Now the previous image gets passed into another extension input node over here. This is actually a subgraph, so if you click into that little graph icon, you'll see exactly what's inside. All the internal connections are basically the same as the other sampler groups, but with one key difference. When you use this extension setup, you're working with an image batch extended with overlap. That's what lets you seamlessly stitch your previous video frames with the newly generated ones. So two video segments blend together smoothly. And the great thing about the SVI framework, by default, it only uses five frames to stitch motion together, and it does it pretty nicely. But under the hood, it's actually processing the entire latent data to understand and capture motion continuity, or even introduce new motions as the video extends. All right, let's quickly check out the model loader here. This group is responsible for loading your WAN 2.2 image to video model. So you'll see slots for both the high noise and low noise models. In my own computer setup, I'm using the WAN 
2.2 image to video FP16 models, and since these are already FP16, I don't need to enable the FP16 accumulation option. I'm also using the LoRa loader here to load two things, the Light X 2V LoRa and the SVIV2 Pro LoRa, both through this custom node. So double check which version of the Light X2 V image to video LoRa you have and load that into the node. Whichever option works for you is fine. For the text encoder, just pick the one you already have in your system, the WAN 2.1 and 2.2 text encoders and VAE models are the same, so it's pretty straightforward. Now here's my starting image, a young lady in a coffee shop sipping coffee. By default, this workflow includes three sampler groups. That means if you're generating 81 frames total, you'll end up with about a 15 second video. A lot of people ask, can I extend it even more? And the answer is yes, it's totally possible. You can just copy and paste those two extension groups and chain them together, kind of like making meatball spaghetti or threading fish balls onto a straw. The method is simple, copy and paste all those nodes, then rewire them as needed. Just remember, every sampler group will need to receive both the previous image and the sampled latent data. See those blue and pink dots? Just link them up properly. Yeah, it's kind of tedious work. And don't forget, you'll also need to write your own text prompts for each segment. At the end, all those image frames get stitched back together into your final video result. Now, just to give you a sense of scale, if you're aiming for a one minute video, you'll need to run about 10 samplers. So your next step is to prepare your text prompts. I'm using Quen 3 Max to generate text prompts for me, based on the exact same image I'm feeding into the workflow. I actually made two versions, one for a 30 second video with each segment at five seconds and another for a 60 second, one minute video. I also gave it some direction. I wanted something very lifestyle chill, casual video footage, and it generated some solid prompts. For this demo, I'm gonna go with the 60 second version. So I'll use that prompt for the upcoming generation. What you need to do is either copy and paste all those segments if you're using a language model like I did or type them out yourself. Then plug them into the workflow and hit run. While it's generating, you'll notice each sampler runs pretty fast. And honestly, the hardware requirements aren't that intense for each sampling step. I'd say this workflow is pretty manageable for most setups. Once generation is done, the combined video will pop up right here. Go ahead and zoom in for a full page preview. By default, the resize image node sets the width and height to 640 pixels. That's a smart choice. It makes the workflow lighter and easier to run, whether you've got low or high VRAM. I'd say this dimension works well for most people. Now let's check out the actual video quality. In the first five to six seconds, everything stays consistent. Around the 10 second mark, the character starts moving, shifting poses, performing new actions. By 20 seconds, you can see the effect of my prompt. The camera starts rotating around the character as she acts in the scene, so you get different angles, dynamic movement. You'll also notice the sunlight coming through the window. It actually follows the scene correctly. The light originates from where she's sitting, spilling onto the table outside. And even as the camera rotates and her hair moves, that lighting stays consistent. That said, you'll still see a bit of degradation toward the end of the video. Starting around 41 seconds, the color fidelity begins to drift. And honestly, that's just how it goes. There's no ultimate video length in AI right now. These models are all built on transformer architecture. And as I've always said, the longer the sequence, the more the context starts to drop. This LoRa, it's like steroids. It helps you hold things together a bit longer, but it's not magic. So while it helps, I don't recommend obsessing over even longer videos. That's kind of, unrealistic right now. Once you're happy with your result, just save it to your folder. Here's what the full workflow looks like when extended to one minute. It's basically a meatball spaghetti chain of sampler groups. I streamlined it even further, bypass all these groups manually, made it more minimalist with fewer nodes while keeping all the same functionality. How? By using a loop. With a loop, you can cycle through each video segment automatically, and yes, you can still produce looping style content this way. In my loop setup, I've got the extensions running three times, just for demo purposes. 
and you can easily add more prompts using this method. Here's how. Add a prompt string text box node and link it to an any index switch node. That index switch will pass the right prompt value into each new video segment. I also added another node called total seconds. The first part of the video isn't in the loop because it handles latent data differently. It needs that initial anchor frame. So it's better to separate the two. Keep the first segment standalone and run all the extension samplers inside the loop. Everything else, like the load image node, stays the same. All you really need to do is create your own text prompts inside the loop. Each string passes its text as a value into the loop, so the number of strings you connect equals the number of segments you'll generate. Just remember, update the total seconds input to match your desired length. All right, now I'm going to try a different starting image. This time I am using the character Rumi Realism style. I've got a 60 second example ready, but I'm only going to run 15 seconds for this demo for the first test. So that means I'll be using three text prompts in this example. And it's pretty nice. For 15 to 30 seconds, I'd say SVI 2.0 Pro really hits the sweet spot for video content. Even 30 seconds still works well. So let's try a 30 second version that'll use six text prompts notes. This time, I've changed the prompts so the character is running. While it's generating, we'll come back and see how it turned out. Okay, we've got the video, and this whole thing is powered by just six connected text prompts in this shortened version. Now, if you want to go even longer, just follow what I mentioned earlier. Copy and paste more text prompt boxes and connect them to the any index switch input. That's how you add more prompts for each segment. And finally, don't forget to go back up to the total seconds node and update it, say, to 30 seconds, 60 seconds, or whatever length you're aiming for. Just keep in mind, each segment is 5 seconds long because we're running at 16 frames per second with 81 frames per segment. As you can see here, I also used random seed numbers, which gave me more dynamic video on each segment. Let's try one more, a different character, and this time, I'll go for the full 60 seconds. This will take a while to generate, so while it's running, I'll clean up the workflow, tighten up the node layout, make it look better organized, and simplify things for easier future use. And yeah, we can definitely remove those extra groups and nodes we don't need, minimalist style all the way. Okay, the video's done. It works really well for videos with steady shots, slow motion, or even static camera angles. Those are perfect for SVI style generation, but if you're going for super fast camera movements, like intense fight scenes or dramatic cinematic cuts with rapid angle changes, SVI isn't the best fit. Take a look at this final output. The character's outfit, style, and proportions all stay consistent. I'd say it's pretty consistent overall with SVI 2.0 Pro. And best of all, no more repetitive or ping pong style motions between every five seconds, something we used to struggle with. Back in the day, I had to mess around with different seed numbers just to break up the looping motion. But now, the character is just walking along the lakeside and the motion flows naturally. No robotic repetition. Even though I literally copied and pasted the same prompt over and over, keep walking, keep walking, the output doesn't just replay the same frames or environments, the motion evolves organically. So there you go. Cleaning up this looping setup is actually pretty easy. Just follow the instructions from the original SVI example workflow. You can either stick with the straightforward method, repeat the sampler groups copy up to 10 groups for a 50 second video, which is easier for most people, or go the dynamic route like I did, use a loop with index switched prompts, either way works. So yeah, that's the latest update on SVI long video generation for image to video. It's come a long way and 2.0 Pro definitely fixes some key motion issues we've seen before. I'll see you guys next year, have a nice day, and see ya.